Okay, so um, like a lot of other drawings, you want to start with some basic shapes. We're starting with a, a big oval here. The line meant to represent the spine should go towards the end, the back end of that oval. Don't put it too centered or it's going to cause problems for you later and you're going to have to erase it and redraw it. Of course, you want to add the line for the center of the mouth um, the, where the nose is going to be and the eyes as well. You're going to double up on that back line to show that that spine or that neck has a little bit more girth. And we're going to go ahead and add the lines uh, or the shapes for for the eyes and the nose. Um, that slanted rectangle seems to be the shape for the eyes. Of course, uh, a triangle for the nose. Once you add the two kind of slim rectangles representing the the top teeth and the bottom teeth, you could do a little half circle there in the back. And right after that, you kind of want to get everything else in place. And when you're doing the lines of the neck, you want to make sure you have eight spaces. I'm not sure if that's anatomically correct, but eight spaces seems to work well for me and make sure you have the, the kind of uh, different shapes. It's not really a standard shape for the hyoid and the thyroid cartilage. Once all the shapes are done, you want to start kind of defining things a little bit more. Make sure that the, the nose peaks out a little bit on the top and the bottom. Start putting in the shape for the jaw and you can start redefining kind of uh, the, so the eye socket and whatnot. Make sure that it doesn't stay complete here, the, that rectangle, so you do want to erase the front part. And in all actuality, I think that my head on the back could have been a little bit bigger. Uh, meaning to say, I think uh, there's a little bit more more space there that the, the spinal column or the neck isn't so in line with the back of the head. Uh, so you could maybe give yours a little bit more. And I think that'll work a little bit better. Just a little bit, not, not too much. The spine or the vertebrae can seem a little complicated. But if you just take a good look at that video, you'll realize that it's kind of repeated shapes. The, the tail end of the vertebrae, they're not all the same, but if you did them all the same, I'm not going to hold that against you. Uh, they do have that little piece that sticks out, and I just kind of quickly went down and repeated that shape. And then there's like a little U that goes inside all of them. And doing it that way, it, I think it simplified it a bit, and that's why we use those shapes and whatnot. Um, because other than that, I think it could have become very complicated to do the, the vertebrae. Um, make sure that last one you leave a little a little space there because you are going to add the the collarbone uh, to that space right there to find the the hyoid and the thyroid cartilage make sure that um those are, are shaped right. It can be a little bit difficult, especially for the hyoid, because it, it's showing you kind of the front and what's in the back. That's why the shape is a little bit um, non-standard. In all regards, this is very similar to the last assignment. It's just the side view. Uh, but of course, the side view is, is very important because you're not going to always draw people facing you. As a matter of fact, um, rarely do you draw people in in one position all the time people are constantly moving so you need to know how to how to draw people in different positions uh, once all your shapes are done you could go ahead and uh, start drawing in the specific sections so we can label them later you could also start shading uh, you do want to keep some of the shading light in the beginning until you're confident and then once you are are sure about it then you could darken in certain areas and you'll see that I'll, I'll darken it in, in, uh, in, a, in a minute or so. The teeth, I think these teeth in, in a way are much simpler than the, the straight on view because they are not receding. So the sideways teeth, if you remember on the straight on view, you had to slowly reduce their size to make it look, you know, like it was receding in space. But with these, you don't have to do that. So in many ways, these are a little bit easier. Uh, now most of the drawing is actually done, so I'll just go ahead and start shading. And there isn't much to say about the shading, so make sure that you're hatching and cross-hatching. You are going to use a bit more of the te measuring techniques that you've learned, particularly uh, relational proportion or eyeballing it. You know, Once you have that main oval 
compare the sizes of things against themselves. So once you put that line uh, for the front of the skull, make sure you compare it against the the oval. But of course, looking at the reference to make sure that it's not too small or that it's not too big. Areas that are particularly darker also you want to cross hatch. So um, the depth or the uh, on my screen, it's the kind of the left of the eye where that that gap is or that that hole would be. You want to make sure that's a little bit darker to show that there is depth there. Of course, towards the end of the teeth as well and between the teeth and between the vertebrae. Those are all areas that can be darker. And you also definitely want to make sure that you label it. It's very important to label that way you start understanding the the skull and how it works and it's going to help with your drawing. Even if you don't have a super thorough understanding, it'll it'll help you quite a bit even with a basic understanding. And once you've labeled the drawing, uh, you're done. There's a few more labels on this one than there were on the frontal view, just because there's there's more that you can actually see. Uh, it's not that much more, but uh, there is maybe like three or four more. So make sure you get all of those labels in and try to spell them correctly. I it's I know it may be difficult to understand my writing, but if you look at the the virtual handout, the spelling should be correct. And if it's not, I apologize, but try to get it as correct as possible. If you notice that it's not correct, uh, just let me know and, I, and I'll try to change it. That's it for this video, guys. Um, I'm grading on Friday. See you then.